Hi folks, we got a fun one for us today. It's going to be motion and animation on your stream, how to set it up and how to get it started. I really can't explain this enough as far as the million things you can do with it. So I figured I'd have Mini-Me come out and do a quick little demo. Now I can do this with a mouse click. I can have my Elgato Stream Deck kick it off. I can have commands and chat kick it off or even channel point exemptions. Let's show you how. Hi folks and welcome to our channel. Here we take a look at anything we can do to help you enhance your stream, whether it's visual, audio, or brand. I'm your man, the argument mock your stream champ. If you haven't done so already, jump in, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, follow us here. We've got a lot more stuff coming. If you haven't done so already, we also stream quite often on Twitch. Come check us out live, ask us questions, or even game with us. And with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the stream PC and I'll show you how to do this. All right, the first thing you need to do is jump into this website right here where we get all our fun little plugins. Not gonna lie, it's a plugin video, why not? But this one's newer and improved. I've done motion before, but this one has got a lot of things you can do with it. Uh, first thing you need to do is go ahead and download here, depending on your PC, you'll, you've got a Win32, 64, Linux, download the appropriate one. That's going to come in the form of a zip file. So if you go to my downloads, you'll see I've got my zip file here. It comes in two folders. After you extract that, we're going to copy that guy, navigate to where OBS is located. For me, it is in program files OBS. And then we're going to drop these files right here. It will override all of your plugins for you. If you have the old motion plugin, this should override that as well. So you don't have to worry about any sort of weird compatibility. It will update you to what to uh, update to you to the current version. So afterwards, you're going to need to restart your OBS. Sometimes your computer, depending on your systems. And then you won't see this right away because it actually is a filter source on your scene. So what we'll need to do is go down to scenes. We're going to right click on the scene that you wanted to manipulate in and add a filter. I'm going to slide this over so you can kind of see. The effect filters are here. We're going to hit plus. The new one is a move source. Um, and then we'll make a move source. Lots of different options you can pick from. You need to um, highlight what source object that you want to move. I'm going to select my mid cam. That's this cam right over here. We're going to move it around. Um, I'm going to let this set as my base point. So um, a couple things you can do. You can change the, uh, the animation speed, like 600 milliseconds, just over a half a second. Um, you can make it relative if you want the thing to move and continuously move in that direction. I don't know why you would do that. Change its visibility, its start delay. Um, the easing and easing function in the curve kind of manipulate the path that it takes and how, how quickly, how sharp, and how wide. Um, you'll have to play around with these depending on what you want to do for your individual assets. I'm just going to keep them the same. Um, start trigger. This can be anything from changing scenes to showing objects to even um, filtering um, the, this particular source off and on. And that's kind of how I did it uh, with Lorian board. I basically made a series of filters and then just toggled the sources visibility. Um, that's a really, really good way to do it. If you want me to show you how to do that, ask me in the comments below. Um, maybe I'll make a separate video on just a little bit more specifics on Lorian board integration. I already have a Lorian board um, video so check that out i'll link it down below as well on how to install it but this is how i manipulated it um, if you do have like a, an alcanto stream deck the best way is going to probably be uh, with a key press and so if you want to do that you can do this with a hockey here and that will highlight this effect filter so know what the name is i'll show you where that is real fast so let me close that go into files and under settings it'll take a second to load i have a million assets so this will actually take me quite a while to load if you go down to hotkeys, what you'll need to do is on the left is the scene and then on the right is the hotkey for those things. So it's everything from transition, but you'll also see if you scroll all the way down after you've made that hotkey, you'll see movement by that hotkey. And then you can do a couple of hotkey presses and then you can manipulate the move using your keyboard. And also that keyboard press can go into like the Elgato. So you can use just one button to do a series of buttons, if that makes sense. Okay. So I'm not going to show you how to do that today because it's um, not, I think, efficient. I think the learning board is probably the way to go. Um, so we're going to go back into here on the filters. We have that move source here. 
move that back over. I'm going to use this as my base. So if you just hit trans, um, get transform, it's going to populate all the coordinates, the scale, the size, the rotation, um, everything that you need to know, uh, even the crop. So if you need something to crop change for you, um, you can do that. And so it will keep that transform for you all in that spot. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and move it all the way. Let's move it to the top. And I'm going to actually, I'm going to invert this. It's going to be kind of weird. I'll just flip myself vertically and then we'll uh, kind of put myself in the corner and we'll, we'll make another move source. And remember these names if you need to use it for your hotkeys or your, um, your filter force sources. Uh, change your source needs to be back to that mid cam again. Um, I'm going to get this transform. It's going to transform even the rotation, uh, which is for us is inverted. I'll change it to 600. Well, let's go, let's go full second because why not? And I'll just show you like, uh, let's do a circular so you can kind of see the difference in the curve. All right. Start trigger. I'm not worried about that because I'm just going to use the start button to do this. And then if I highlight the first one and I scroll all the way down and I hit start, or those keys, if I found a key, I should flip down to the bottom. And if I had the other one and I just hit start, I should flip back up to the top. You can see how it has a different curve, okay? So this is really how you install it and set it up. It's just these triggers and these key presses that really makes it kind of integrated so you can do millions of things. Imagine having four or five different sources here, all different positions on this one asset. I can make it spin and rotate and flip all the way around. So it gives you a little bit of an idea what you can do on the, I'm gonna go back to uh, this scene over here. Woo! Gives you a little bit of idea what you can do on this powerful program on there. I hope that helps. If you like the video, please help us out with a share, like, a subscribe, and I'll see you glitches in the next video. Be safe. I hit her like a grandfather clock, y'all. I hit her one way and then back the other way. Was, that was a combo.